this is just a little video we wanted to do to show you guys about the kind of equipment I use. Um, everything I use is traditional uh, Buckaroo Vaquero horse training equipment, uh, except for maybe the snaffle bit. That's more to uh, play to the crowd if it was up to me. Uh, every horse that came would be ridden in this for at least probably a year to a year and a half before he ever had a bit in his mouth. This is a rawhide bozelle. It has a rawhide core. Uh, this, these, the lighter color, are braided rawhide. And this part, these finer strands, are braided kangaroo hide. This is the heel knot. These are the bars. And this is what you call the nose band. And the way this works is you would ride it just like anything else. You feel out your horse, feel what he's doing, and adjust this accordingly. And this is the rein for the bozelle. This is called a makati. This is made of horse mane hair. It is twisted together. This is a six strand horse hair makati. And if you can zoom in here, you notice it has a braided horse hair core, which gives it a little bit of extra feel and a little bit of extra weight for signal. These are anywhere between 22 and 24 feet long. The way these work is you tie it up every time you go to get on your horse. You lay this here with a little bit of space and you make counterclockwise wraps, however many that are needed to accommodate the size of your horse's face. Most of my colts, I'll make three wraps. You reach through and grab and pull and these are your reins. As you feed this back, you'll allow it to hang like this and you can untwist any kinks so it hangs straight, okay? Then you can adjust this accordingly. You take the lead portion of your Makati, which is this. You make one forward half hitch, drop it over the nose band, and pull it all down snug. This Latigo piece is called the hanger. And all three of these together is what you call a hackamore. Bozell, hanger, and makati. When it's all tied up in one unit, it's called a hackamore. Um, I, like the, I like the heel knot on the ends of them to be somewhat heavy because they have a lot of drop. Horse can feel a really quick release, which helps with the timing. Um, the wraps up here also put added weight on the back. And uh, this will tuck through your belt, so when you get off your horse, you don't have to throw these over his neck. This is your lead rope. It just stays in your belt. And this is what I start all of my colts in. Uh, this is the thicker one. This here is a 5 8 There's one size bigger, which is a 3 quarters, which I don't use. Just I don't know why. I like these. And as the horse progresses, you downgrade. You get to smaller diameters of Bozells and Makati's. And this one has about the, the stiffness of your average garden hose on a somewhat cool morning. And as you downgrade these, these bozelles, they'll get softer and softer to transfer more and more feel, the lighter and more understanding your horse has. Now, most of my clients' horses never get past the thickest diameter of these because most of them only stay between 30 and 60 rides. Um, and I don't have a chance to advance them that far. And another factor is, is uh, they want to be able to ride them in some kind of bit. Uh, so I'll be able to get 17 or 18 rides in this, and then I have to go ahead and transfer them over to a snaffle bit just to make them more user friendly. But uh, I actually feel I can get a lot more done with a hackamore than I can a snaffle bit. And this doesn't really have to do with training horses that much, but this is a braided rawhide rieta. It is 60 feet long, made from cowhide. This is a traditional lasso for buckaroo, vaquero oriented cowboys. Um, these are very, very, very nice to rope with. Uh, you have to be able to really let rope slide and not, not put jerk on your horse or your cow, otherwise it'll snap. And these cost about four to $800. So 
it's pretty good motivation to not jerk your animals when you rope them. That's why I like those. Thanks, Brandon. And yeah, just hand me all of those and this one too. These are just other variations of hackamores. This is a slightly smaller one. This is probably a half inch and it's a little more flexible. And this is a bozel made of horsehair. The way these work is, is you can dip them in water and make them more stiff. And uh, these can actually be used to get a horse lightened up in a hackamore pretty quickly. But you only want to ride them in this two or three times. Otherwise, they may start to get used to the feel of it and may start to lug on it a little. Explain about the feel of the horse hair. Oh, the, the, feel, the feel of this hair when it gets wet, it stiffens. So... What it does is it makes these little horsehair fibers be a little bit prickly. So if you've got a horse that's really heavy in his face, these little pricklies can kind of motivate him to try a little harder to figure out a way to come off of that pressure. I don't actually use this very much, but I've run across a couple occasions where other horses that people had brought that were kind of heavy, I'd put on them for three or four rides and it lightened them up pretty good. Uh, so there's those now. These, these smaller ones, these are under bridles and two rainbow zells. I talked about transferring that cold into a snaffle bit. This would be a two rainbow zell, meaning you would put this smaller one on underneath the, uh, the snaffle bit or whatever bit you would be transferring your horse into, along with this smaller diameter of horsehair makati. Uh, you tie it up the same way and uh, these are notice these are a lot more flimsy they have a little more feel to them but you don't really you don't really use these until your horse starts to become lighter where he doesn't require as much and I've got some more of those around here somewhere but this is a few of them and all of these are braided rawhide with rawhide core some of them have some decorative accents on them and this one here, this is a, depends on what part of the country you're from. This could be a Bostilia, a pencil Bozelle, a get down Bozelle. But what this is, is for when you're riding your horse straight on the bridle and you have your bridle reins, this still goes on him. This ties to his forelock and your lead rope ties around his neck and shoots down through this and then comes back to your belt. So even when you're riding a horse in a bit, you, you get off and you don't have to flip the reins over his head or unclip. You've got your get down rope right in your belt. And a get down rope is this one right here. This one's only 16 feet long because it doesn't make wraps and make reins. It's just, it's a lead rope is basically what that is. And let's see what else we've got here. You got your spade there. Yeah, we'll go over that in just a second, um, if you can hold that. This is another, this is a half inch horsehair Makati. That, this diameter would be matched up with probably this one. Um, this, this, is a, this is a smaller one, and it would be matched up with something like this. Notice the diameters are about the same. And all of these are made of uh, mane hair from horses, all right. These are the bridle reins. Most of my clients' horses never get to be ridden in these. These are also made of braided rawhide. Uh, they've got rawhide knots on them called buttons for added weight and added signal. These chains here are called rain chains. They do the same thing. They add weight and more pre-signal to the bit that you're riding in. And they have these, which are called Romels, hence the name Romel reins. And these act as poppers, whether you're moving cattle or your horse isn't moving off your leg. You can over, you can court them a little bit with that and motivate them to go. And these reins are not meant to be ridden two-handed like this. These reins are strictly made to be ridden on a bridle horse. And a bridle horse is a horse that can do everything off of a direct neck rein. So everything would be right here. And uh, 
and they they have a lot of this weight down here it gives a lot of release and a lot of feel along with the way they braid these gives it it's 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 very nice to ride a good bridle horse in a set of these reins and uh we're now we're getting up into the more advanced stuff i, I use these on my personal horse the bay you might have seen in the video he is a almost finished two rein horse and uh this is a spade bit there's a lot of controversy about these for people that don't understand how a spade bit works um, but this is all kind of need to clean this thing up a little bit but this is all inlaid engraved silver notice the rain chains here you should never see a curb chain on a spade bit or any kind of bridle for that matter should always be a strap and it has copper rollers here and here and at the top and they all roll to help the horse salivate which kind of acts as a lubrication for the horse's mouth a lot of people will look at this bit and say well that bit looks very severe and actually these bits are more modest than any snaffle bit it goes back to the same thing we talked about about the spurs it's pressure distribution if my hand was a horse's mouth and I was holding, let's see, let's say, let's say the joint of my elbow was my horse's mouth and I was holding this and then the spade started to tip a little bit. I want you guys to see here that you have all of this surface area to press on the roof of the mouth. So it's even, it's very widespread and even pressure, di pressure distribution versus say a bit with a lower port, it would be more concentrated pressure on a certain area. Curb strap adjustment is also very important. This should be adjusted and really with any bit, a curb strap should be to where you can fit two fingers between the strap and their jaw. That adjustment is important because if this strap is too loose and you go to pick up, it'll allow that bit to turn over and push too much into the roof of his mouth. The top of these spade bits right here is only supposed to move about that much. These spade bits do not, these spade bits are only for extremely broke horses that have been prepared to work off of a signal instead of a pull. This is a, this is a signaling bit. It's not a leverage bit like most bits out there. Um, you usually won't put these kind of bits on a horse until he can pretty much ride bridleless anyway. Um, and you'll never take much of a hold. You'll, you'll never get very firm with a horse in this bit. If you need to pick up and use a little more, that will be done on his nose when he's in the two rein phase. So you're preserving the lightness of the mouth. Um, but I've had people come up and say, Carson, I thought you really cared about horses and making it clear and setting things up to where the horse can understand and um and i've explained to them well yeah i do that's why that's why i'll spend five hundred dollars on a silver bit and uh and take three or four years preparing a horse to be that light to where he can be ridden in a bit like that it's a it's a very traditional tool um as you could probably tell from all the gear that I use there, I take a lot of pride, just as any traditional buckaroo would, in bringing a horse along and making him the finest horse that he can possibly be. And, uh, the, last thing that, the last thing that a good traditional practitioner of a cure horsemanship would do is anything that makes his horse bothered or does something that his horse can't handle. It's a very laid out process that's been around for thousands of probably not thousands at least 500 years that method has been around hackamore hakila de frino is the term it means from hackamore to bit and spade bit is what that means it's a ancient system and uh i take a lot of pride in in riding in equipment like that and how it was built to be ridden in which is with finesse 